it's just not worth the potential risk. Seafood's tough. We can't get delivery of the tables and chairs. Yeah, we can't do that anymore. We can't do that anymore. Unfortunately, had to close because of COVID. They're either out of business or they can't get people to work. Ego got the better of us. We're seeing gusts of up to 20 miles an hour. People get hurt. Bartenders might hate us today. Credit card machine's not working. People just don't listen. Day of chaos. Tonight is horrible. We couldn't find the staff, just couldn't get it done this year. The sun is killing my ice. One bag left, not even. So that'll pull people away, probably. Lines are so long that we got to alleviate the pressure off the bar. Where could the top be for the tent? I don't know where the hell they all are. I don't want a big, giant pile of bullshit. Probably a lot more people here than we expected this year. Keep your head down and keep the tickets moving. Sold out of scallops, sold out of lobster, sold out of calamari. He literally ran out of lobster. It was a small disaster. Everybody slept in. What can we do to change that? How can we fix that? It exploded. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. Keep it moving, keep rotating stock. Yeah, I absolutely hate when people just come back here. It's never our intention to have people wait all day. The health department had to throw away food. We have to do something. <laughs> At the end of the day, these are all just little problems. We just got to roll with it. I'm TJ McNulty. I'm the owner of Grand Festivals. And I started this festival 11 years ago with two buddies from college. So we are here year 11. We sponsor local everything, local beers, local spirits. All of our vendors are local. When the opportunity was presented itself to do a seafood festival, I said we should do it at India Point Park just because they had just finished the park from the I-195 relocate. And we love coming down to Hot Club all the time. It's just so fun to hang out over on this part of town. So when we started, it was a couple guys throwing a party. And one year we partied too late. And I didn't have to even say anything. The guys realized like with everyone coming and, and all the effort that's put in by all the vendors, it's too big of a day for all those people for us to not take it very seriously. Well, I went to high school with TJ, Doug, Jimmy, most of these guys. Imagine working with like your five, six best buddies. Like. We had a couple of come to Jesus, man. In 20, 2018 or 2017, everybody slept in. We used to stay in a houseboat for the weekend over by a hot club. We went out partying late on the Friday night beforehand. And yeah, we can't do that anymore. We can't do that anymore. I mean, it's not to say we don't have 11 beers on a Friday night, but we do it, we do it earlier in the day. <laughs> Things look so different today. Now that I'm flying away. So basically what's happening is we can't get delivery of the tables and chairs that we get every year for the festival because nobody has any staff. So we now had to rent a second truck so we could go pick up the 70 banquet tables, the 60 round top tables, and the 550 chairs. So they should be on their way back here soon and hopefully they can get it all in this last trip. And then we get to set up the big tent. We gotta roll out all the banners. <clears throat> this is garbage. We got zip ties. Uh, in the back of the truck in the zip tie bin. You wanna do me a favor and pick up a giant big bag of zip ties? We had a whole bin full of them, but I don't know where the hell they all are. Fun, the last minute stuff. You really never know what you pack up because it's always done in such a whirlwind. It's like I have a tent that I have, I don't know where the top is. Like where could the top be for the tent? We have a storage unit, a 10 by 10, literally packed in as tight as it could go. You couldn't fit a toothpick in when we're done with it. And that's it, that's what we gotta unpack. It's not that much. Festival in a box. With a random straggler from last festival. Brisbane, Australia. It'll be a late night tonight and an early morning tomorrow morning, but we should be in good shape. Everyone knows what they've gotta do to get us across the finish line here. To me, and then it's vendors all along this run. Okay. If it goes here, you won't have a spot for your truck. You'll be here and here, and the beer tent will be across the way. It's amazing how time goes by and relationships evolve, uh, you know, here at the weekend of the event and throughout the year on social media. You gotta take that stuff away, bud. You're the man. Are those peanut butter cookies? Yeah, my homemade peanut butter cookies. You knew they were my favorite, didn't you? No, I didn't. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. How's everything? Good. Loop around, park right here in the flat area, yeah. and then we'll walk quick and I'll, we'll mark it out. We're gonna hug the grass line and then we go out. You know, I'm glad they sent you. And then we angle it this way. And then we swing them closed this I way. Gotcha. This is a fun time game. This is, it's just fun. Hey, are we pulling all that mulch at the top of the hill? No, he will live there. When's yep. it going? Uh, the lady, he, he use it. Yeah, but when's he using it, do you know? I don't know. Tony, what are we doing with all the mulch up there? I don't want a big giant pile of bullshit in the walkway. 
It's either I gotta go buy a shovel or if you guys can let me borrow one or two. You don't want to just wheel it down? This cart. So this cart we bought, I shit you not, we could load it up with 2,000 pounds, which works out really well when we've got to run beer from the truck to the tent or 60 bags of ice. United Rentals has tower lights here that they haven't picked up, and that's pretty common. I mean, they, they usually pick them up when they have somewhere else to go. We need to get them out of the way, and we certainly don't want to use them, because if we use them, then the person who picks them up gets billed for all the fuel that was used. Let's do 10 and 10, and we're going to do two portable toilets next to that electrical panel. Okay. Is there any way to get more water in case we run out? We seem to run out of water for our hand washing station. Do you? We can. If you can, bring two more sinks, two more. one for each spot. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Shitters are full, Clark. Portable toilets, always the most fun thing to deal with at the festival. No sign of those instructions under there, huh? That's the Feels like 2011. So I wasn't here, but from all reports, it was a small disaster. We did not charge admission until 2014. It was a free event. It was one day. It steadily grew, and then 2018, it exploded. It's a team of people that goes, what can we do to change that? How can we fix that? Like, they didn't want to send us the chairs. We're like, okay, we'll get another U-Haul and just drive over there. It'll suck, but we got to take care of it. And there's something for everyone. I know that like Sunset Farm has like a pulled pork sandwich. Someone's got a burger, something's got a chicken sandwich. The scallop and bacon roll at the shuck and yeah. truck is just hands yeah. down. The Matunik's oysters are always awesome. Matunik's uh -huh. oysters, I mean, Matunik's lobster, lobster roll, roll yeah. is very good. In 2018 and 2019, uh, Melville's Grill ran out of, he sold out of Portuguese fish chowder. What is Portuguese fish chowder? Portuguese fish chowder might be the tastiest thing at this festival. But I'm a, I'm a big soup guy, so I'm biased. That's old Jimmy, big soup guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, one year the guy ran out of lobster. He made like a hundred and something lobsters, and he yeah. literally ran out of lobster. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the biggest one. It's gonna be a tsunami tomorrow. There are cops. I mean, yeah, TJ local has cops. To hire the there's local a, there's cops a minimum he has to have. Come around. I've never seen anybody get sloppy no. or never. Although one year we did have up on that wall over there the people who were vegan and they didn't want anybody to eat fish. Oh. And uh, so they were protesters there. That was fun. He says, you know you made it when, when the protesters protest, When the protesters yeah. come in. Don't feel the way I see. At least I don't think so, just me. Just bring them up here. Go help mom on the other table. Yes. These are for the other side when you guys are ready. Okay. Like that. We don't open till 11, but we know that this line gets insane, so the plan is to have everyone set up and ready at the gate at 10.30. COVID hit, man. A lot of vendors just out of business or 
don't have the manpower. Okay. If we don't have credit cards, then let them in, because we're not ready for them. So, if we don't have a credit card, they don't have cash. Let them in. Okay. So the internet on one of the phones seems to be not working. Their credit card machine's not working. So just tell Adrian this should, this one should work fine. People starting to trickle in. Things are looking good. If you excuse me, I just talked to the board of health here. Booking demos and samples. Yeah. David. I don't think they're here till tomorrow. Okay. Any problems? Any issues? He had to cancel because he couldn't get anybody to work. All right, all right. So Board of Health is all good, no issues. No one's got to throw away any food. The sound guys should be pretty well set up. We still have some banners that aren't out. Tent with no top is our biggest problem right now, which is pretty good. Because I don't have a tent top for that other tent, Al's going to set up in here with so you guys. Right so. in here with us, you tell me what you need. I just need a table. Today being September 11th, we had these red, white, and blue t-shirts made uh, with the anniversary of 9-11. Uh, if people want them, they can just make a donation to the Never Forget Fund, and we can just give them a t-shirt for making the donation. Hi, I'm Jess Holly. here helping out with my good friends. I'm Jackie, uh, TJ's fiance, so running the merch. 9-11 Secret Festival shirts have been selling like crazy, but we've really been busy today. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, many people either couldn't find staff or unfortunately had to close because of COVID. So I think you're going to see some long lines, but hopefully everyone understands. Hopefully we'll sell a lot of t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Giuliano and I uh, run the bar here for the seafood festival. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. It's basically been all the way back there since it built up and it hasn't come down. I've run bars in New York, I run restaurants, that's my job. Like at work I have a refrigerator to put everything in. So you, you run out, you get you get it out of the fridge, it's cold already. Right here you have to anticipate, you gotta see what's selling, you gotta ice them down. So you, and you know, it takes about an hour for beer to get cold on ice, so you really gotta keep it moving, keep rotating stock, and just uh, keep going. A couple of kegs to tap through a cooler. Coolers have a cold plate in them, so you just have to keep the ice on there so you don't really have to keep the kegs too cold. I absolutely hate when people just come back there and start grabbing beer for the bands, they grab this and that, like everything I do, the beer's all counted for, like that's TJ's hand right there, just stealing our beer again. Because the line was so long that we figured we can go around with a cart, different amount of beers, $5 a beer, same price as here. I'm trying to get people that are online waiting for food too, because it's never fun to wait. Hey, look at all these people on the line. Let's just throw some beers on a cart and walk through and be like, hey, cash only, five bucks a beer. Who wants it? I was just trying to thin it out a little bit. Everybody seems to be having a good time. We got a funky band on right now. We had some great music all day. I get to play soon and I'm psyched about that. It is busy, but most of the busy, like pain in the ass work is the setup and the takedown. There's less so of a learning curve now than there ever has been just because we've been doing it for so long. I kind of announce the bands. I announce some of our sponsors too, that I help out in between changing over. Uh, Andrew takes care of the bands, bringing them in and like food if they need beers or anything like that. We like it like this, it's fun. Well, my name's Andrew McNulty. I'm TJ McNulty's brother. My responsibility here is to take care of the bands backstage, onload them, offload them, make sure they're comfortable, get them food. Even though we've been doing it 11 years, you're always gonna run into little hiccups. A lot of it is just day of chaos, of making sure that everything is ready before the crowds start coming in. The food is really what brings people in and the music keeps them here and hopefully they're having a good time. We would love to see this event grow in terms of the food vendors that are here. So that's the way we would like to see it grow for the vendors. Hi, how you doing? My name is Alfonso Anthony Jr. Uh, I'm this year's seafood festival uh, medic. Seeing how it's being a seafood festival, we're kind of looking out for any type of allergies, unknown allergies. This is going to be for all the band members, the band members' families. Before they go on stage, they come in here, they grab a couple of refreshments, everything in here is free. It's their way of thanking everybody. It's probably a lot more people here than we expected this year, so you just want to make sure you guys are staying hydrated, getting as much electrolytes, water in your system, carry the hand sanitizer around wash your hands as much as possible and stuff like that. We're really 
excited to be here for the first time. It's been really fun, a lot of great music, and the seafood is on point. It was definitely worth the long uh, line wait. We're gonna go get some donuts, some um, lemonade. lemonade. And I had a bowl, yeah. a, a vegetarian bowl. I'm Josh, and I'm eating Dell's. The first time we went here was to see our friends. We love this park, you know, we come through this park pretty like often. Every day sometimes. We don't normally get so much fresh seafood, so I wanted to get the oysters, the clams, the lobster roll. We're trying stuffies for the first time, and they're yeah. so good. It's a five-minute walk from our home. Very nice to feel like it's such a localized thing, and it feels nice to be part of something like that. Uh, we've been coming to the festival for how many years now? Since Five. the very first one. Yeah, no, since oh, the first one. Years. Yeah. yeah, the scallop roll. Lobster, um, lobster, grilled cheese, tons of oysters, shrimp, clams. Yeah, I think we've got everything. We're going for calamari yes. now. I love coming here and just seeing the mixture of people that come together. Everybody has a good time, and the music is what ties it all together. Everybody is up there listening to the music, and there's so many different types of music. It's people super are, enjoyable. People are dancing. People are, you know, getting to know each other. It really just makes me happy to see Matunic here and see Whalers here, and I'm happy to see Gansett, like, really thriving. You can't get that quality of a brewery everywhere and just to see everyone so excited to support Whalers specifically is like the best thing you could have. This is my fourth one. My name is Rosie and I work at Whalers. I'm the event coordinator for Whalers and this is my first time ever at the Rhode Island Seafood Festival and it's so busy and it's really nice to see so many people in Providence turned out for such a great local event supporting super local businesses. Whalers is the best beer. It's brewed right, it tastes good, it's made by really wonderful people. This is one of Whaler's newest trucks. It's really wonderful because we can bring kegs and store them at the event and keep them cold. Then we can sell more beer and store more beer and have it accessible to more people at events like this. My name is Tim. I'm working with Whaler's Brewing Company. I'm just moving kegs back and forth just to make sure everything's cold. There's a lot of people here down from like our neck of the woods in South County. Like, you know, Matunic Oyster Bar is here, the Shuck and Truck's here. Like all people that have been down towards us for a while. It's really nice to see them go local versus is, oh, let's bring in, you know, Bud Light, Budweiser. It's kind of a nice little thing that you get everybody in the state to see everything in the state. You can never beat clam cakes from Rhode Island, in my opinion. Local clams, local fishermen go out, grab the clams, cook them in a little bit of batter, puff up into a ball. Delicious little delectable type of thing. It really is. My name is Dave Roebuck uh, from Point Jewett, Rhode Island. I have a uh, oyster farm in Point Jewett Pond, and I have a food truck and we've been coming here for 11 years. My brother has uh, two scallop boats out of Point Judith, and we have five commercial fishing boats in the family. We can try to utilize the family's food. So we do a scallop roll, we do lobster rolls, lobster grilled cheese, fish tacos, and then we do the raw bar with the oysters, the little necks. Try to keep it local, Rhode Island has the best seafood, so we try to bring that to the public. We take orders at the window. All the food is constantly being cooked in the truck to keep it hot, keep it fresh. The oysters and the little necks, people will get a separate ticket for that, and then go and get their oysters and their little necks from the raw bars. We have uh, our regular size oysters, and then we have jumbos. They're about the size of my hand. Those are about five to six years old. And the people who are really into eating oysters and they want a nice big oyster, those are available too. TJ's great. We've been working with him for, like I said, 11 years. He has vendors with different menu items so that not everyone's selling the same thing. He gets the people here. He's got great music. It's just a win-win. Hopefully this can keep on going, because this we look forward to every year. The Farrell family, my first name's Ethan from Sunset Farm. We do all farm and table right from Sunset Farm. Braised short rib grilled cheese, a lot of barbecue, a lot of fresh seafood as well. We're all non-GMO feeds, Black Angus, all natural. We take a lot of pride, raise our animals 26 to 28 months. At first, when I thought of doing a seafood fest with, with a farm and table barbecue truck, I was a little nervous and intimidated. I wasn't sure how that was gonna go over, but there's definitely, as you can see, a huge demand for it and we also offer you know full sides and in vegan options too we have some vegetarian options so the smoker it's got six racks that spin rotating and we do all our chicken our brisket our pulled pork our pork belly the line went all the way straight back to the uh, seafood fest sign across the park I mean I started prepping at 3 o'clock in the morning and we were still behind the key with food truck and being a food vendor is to stay ahead the best you can keep yourself staffed again in, in these times add to the best you can and um, let it rip, pretty much. Just keep your head down and keep the tickets moving. So I should go check on the gates, but this is a new band, R and Guava Passion, and I've never seen them. And I really put this on just because I like live music and listening to bands, so I'm going to go enjoy a band for a little bit. Come on with us. Brothers friends. 
friends, old guys from back home in New York, they all came up to support, hang out. Oh, look at what it is! This is a musician going on next. One of my best friends in the whole world, John yeah, Fralick. Yes, and he's going on with his lovely sister, <laughs> who I love so much. So we basically bring in all the audio equipment and band equipment, drums, bass, guitars, keys. The TJs are so awesome in like, you know, gathering the right bands and the people like locally, like focusing on local bands, but also reaching out a little bit. Amazing, man, amazing, as awesome. always, yeah. Good yep. people, good vibes, good food, seeing everybody getting out dancing finally after the last year and a half. That's been the best, for sure. Such a chill festival. I mean, we just love coming down. The organization of this festival is really good. Came in yesterday, got set up. The park cooperates with us. So all the things that we need are right here. We got good hands. The power situation is great. The audience is always awesome. So we're just having an awesome time here. And uh, looking forward to many, many more years here in Rhode Island. Well, I wouldn't be in any other place in the world. These guys throw an amazing event. You are too no, good. I'm, I'm just saying, this is like the highlight of my year. I'm Kali Babatoon. I'm the saxophone player to TJ. Um, other TJ. The other TJ. And this is the first year I was able to bring my family the calm and the love. That, that Every time I come around, it's just a, a very relaxing spot to be. They respect the music, the art, and you want to be around that. You want to be a folks that, that respect music, and we just want to play all night when it's like that. And I take a seat and realize I'm not scared. We made it to the end with one bag left, not even. We helped the vendors out, so not everybody uh, plans ahead and brings enough ice, so we all work together. It's nice to see everyone get together. It's also kind of like a big family reunion every year, something we look forward to. Well, that was the best, man. <laughs> That's it. Got the best clams you can find anywhere. Scallops, clams, oysters. It's, you you got to go down. Matunic, he's one of the sponsors here. He's got a restaurant. Awesome. Historically, today's a lighter day. Patriots are playing at 425. So that'll pull people away probably 3.30. Yeah, so you might notice there's a few less tents today. Keep an eye on the wind yesterday. It was picking up a bit. Matunic had their tent blow over last night. It's just not worth the potential risk of a big gust of wind coming along today. Winds are gonna be higher today. I'm seeing gusts of up to 20 miles an hour. Bartenders might hate us today because they're gonna be roasting in the sun, but it's better that than people get hurt, right? Well, right now we just finished setting up. It's a little windy, so we took some of the tent, all the tents down. Our tents, especially like right off the water, they just, they're always blowing around, they're always breaking. Everything's set, tables look lined up, the, Kyle's got the bar all set, music's all set up and ready to go. In the middle of the day, it's kind of like a float around and just fix things as you see them. And then uh, tonight is horrible. <laughs> it goes right, right back to like lifting tables and packing things up and getting your hands dirty. I didn't eat anything yesterday, like all day. <laughs> I didn't think that was a good idea to do it again today. So. This is Tony with the Parks Department. Tony's been working here with us for how long? Since, Since the first started, one? Yeah. yeah, for 11 years. A wildly helpful guy, always down to just do whatever we need to get to get the job going. And thank you. 
Ter terrific human. My name is Tony LeBoy. I work for the Parks Department. Basically what we do is litter, garbage, clean up for the events. Well, yesterday was really busy and it was really busy. I, we love it, but it was, it was a lot of hard work. The people come to the parks and they leave anything and everything you can think of. I just can't tell you what they leave it. Just leave it to your imagination what people leave it at a park and you know, nighttime, overnight. India Point Park is one of the most beautiful parks we have. I mean, you got all the waterfront here that you can look at. It's always a good atmosphere in any of our parks. It's a reflection of who I am, who my crew is, and who the Parks Department is as a whole. So, I mean, we take a lot of pride in our work that we do, you know, and it can be overwhelming at times, I mean, especially with COVID and, you know, the parks have gotten a lot more used. We do our best to keep the parks better for everybody and safe. It's been like 11 years and TJ and I have become pretty good friends. And I mean, he's done a couple other events too here, so he's got a name here and a, good, a great following. So it's a good event and great time. I'm Judy McNulty, now Janet Squilanti, and we work at the gate. <laughs> and we are work right now. <laughs> and we have, yeah. And um, we're here for the festival, so come on down. It was a beautiful day yesterday, and we had a lot of people, and everybody left very happy to be here. And people are just happy to just be out and about, listening to great music and eating great food. Yesterday, very busy. Turned out exactly basically what we were expecting. Uh, a lot of lines everywhere. Uh, next year, we'll definitely have another bar. The problem this year is we couldn't find the staff. We always like to have two bars, but we just couldn't get it done this year. Same thing with the food vendors. They all say the same thing about the staff. Now that there's no tent today, the sun is killing my ice, so I just got to keep putting ice on everything all the time. Ice is melting quicker from the sun. We just covered it here in tarps since we don't have a tent. Everyone seems to have a consistent line, but they're not rolling up the hill like they were yesterday, so that's good. All of our vendors that we've had uh, that are here today have been with us for at least five years. They keep coming back, they want to come back because we have put on a good show, we have great attendees, um, and we've been really blessed to have really good weather. It takes a whole village to put this together. Even, you know, we, we unfold the tables, but TJ's mom, or like the moms and the cousins and the family comes up and runs the gates and unfolds banners and, and, and does everything. Like, we have so much love and gratitude for the support staff to come and do this out of the goodness of their hearts. We're so lucky to have something that's, that's this big, but it's a true family affair. And I love that about this. We're not gonna rush people out of here because we want these guys to sell as much food as they can. Chuck and Truck sold out of scallops, sold out of lobster. Melville Grill sold out of calamari. A lot of people sold out of food, which is good. They see it as a bummer because they see it as an opportunity cost of money left on the table. Seafood's tough because you can't just sell it next week. Your shelf life is a matter of days. So they have to be very, very precise in their order. And we'll let these guys go until people are no longer here. They'll probably be 515, 520. For the people working the bar, I mean, they're kicking ass all day and now they're roasted by the sun. We don't like throwing away ice at the end of the day because you pay a shit ton of money for water that's frozen. So as me and Kyle say, we had the perfect amount of ice to keep all the drinks cold to the end of the day with zero waste. That's what 11 years gets you, to know exactly how much ice we need. Get a good idea how much beer to order so that at the end of the day today we're sold out and we all worked hard this morning to get a jump on cleaning up so the end of the day today isn't an absolute killer. That's it, everything's got to go. Everything's got to get packed up on the truck. Tomorrow it all gets dropped off. Packed up and ready to go And now the memories flow The parking lot where we raced all shopping cuts The skating rink where my first love broke my heart I was just hanging from the monkey bars Scooting around in my little toy car Now I know now my drive is so Great turnout for your love have been better with the weather. Nice to see people back out after COVID. We had the best pre-sale ticket numbers we've ever done. It's been a steady flow of people coming in all day. 
lines have been long, but it kind of comes to the territory and short a couple of vendors, so they're a little longer than normal. It's never our intention to have people wait all day. Uh, we tell everyone if you come earlier, you have a better chance of not waiting online. With COVID, we did have a lot of vendors that dropped out. So if you can be sympathetic and empathetic towards the fact that vendors that are here lost their whole year, and the vendors that didn't make it, didn't make it because they're either out of business or they can't get people to work. My real job is I'm a project manager for a construction company uh, based out of New York. Uh, I recently moved out to our LA office, a newer, younger office. And it's, it's managing people and managing personalities. I was on a number of projects that the deadline was the deadline and there wasn't standard working hours. And you worked till the job was done, not till the day was done. The ability to uh, focus under pressure and deal with unrealistic timelines has prepared me tremendously for this setting. The city has always been really great to us. The parks department has always been phenomenal. All the workers that work here in the park, you know them on a personal basis. You see them on social media all year. The people that work in the office in the parks department are always really helpful. Everyone is, goes out of their way to help you and they all want to see the event succeed as much as you do. The first year, was it was very small. I mean, we were kids who had never thrown anything other than a fraternity keg party. So to go put on a festival, I mean, the first year we did our own food. We sold out of food. The health department had to throw away food. Huge learning curve. So I would say by year five, we had it really hammered down where we knew what worked. Everyone had their own areas that they worked in. The bar guys ran the bar. The door guys ran the door. The sound guys ran the sound. And everyone knows what they have to do. All comes through learning and you learn the most when you screw up. You just gotta try stuff. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, shit, we did this, we got it down pat. We said, cool, let's start two new festivals. Because why not? This one's running so good, what could go wrong? Ego got the better of us. Take a beating, you pull it together, and you pay your bills, and you suck it up. You have it, the people are coming. Change your business plan a bit, change your model. Maybe you have to charge a little bit more for vendors. Maybe you had to up beer prices by a dollar. But like, do things better. So that's what we did. We worked harder, did things better, change the things that weren't working. Year six was excellent. Year seven, out of this world. COVID hit. Okay, we have to cancel all of our festivals. We still did a pickup to go for the seafood festival and that was purely for the vendors. Some of these guys had every wedding, every catered event, every festival, every party, everything canceled. Their income went to zero. And I said, we have to do something. Everyone else has canceled their events. Let's do a pickup to go. We won't charge any vendor fees, there'll be no admission. What else would I want to put the effort into other than the local economy and the, all the vendors here? If the vendors have a great day, all the festival goers have a great day, and all my employees are happy, that's all that I need. For anyone out there it's not working, change the plan, never the goal. You'll get there. Work hard and you'll get there. I'm Janet, uh, I'm going to the bathroom now, and um, I see a green, and I go in there, like a little fierce grass, I find a little open, and there's someone sitting down, oh, and I said, ah, and I close that, and it was green, and I ran out of there like that, but besides that, for the body's been good, and I love them. And we are so proud of TJ. I'm not partial to him, but very, very proud of him. Good person, good, good person. Very proud of him. Thank you, TJ, for having us again, and uh, thank you. All the staff and everybody, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. We all have to shout out TJ. Like this is, it's just awesome to be involved. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Thank you. Very proud to be his mom.